All right, welcome to There's Always a Song. My name is Brent Buchanan, and uh, this, I do believe, is episode 12. Correct me if I'm wrong uh, back there. I think it, okay, I think we're, yeah, episode 12. Wow. Uh, and my guest for this episode is Carol Hill. And for folks that want to find Carol, uh, it's not C-A-R-O-L. No, it's, it's not. It's C-A-R-Y-L-E. Exactly. Carol Hill, and you can find her, of course, on social media. How you doing? I'm doing great, Brent, good. and thank you for the invitation here tonight. It's yeah. just a, a pleasure to be here. It's good to, it's good to have you. Nice to be here. On, uh, on a show called There's Always a Song, because we, we will have a song. Uh, written by you, performed by your good friend Joanne Swan. Joanne Swan, mm -hmm. and uh, Joanne's in in the studio with us she right now. She is, uh, and we'll get to that song a little later on. Yeah. Um, let's talk about how you got. You've been in this country music crazy business for a long time. For a very long time, Brent. Uh, longer than I'd like to say, <laughs> giving my age away. Uh, but, so how did it all start? I know you well, worked in different businesses around Fredericton for, yeah, for a number uh, of years. Really, like where the where the concert parts uh, started, uh, I was working at uh, what was then Riverview Lincoln Mercury, right. and uh, Roley Waddingham was working there oh, okay, as well. Yeah. And uh, so he asked me if I'd be interested at all in starting a, uh, a concert series with him. So we did, Bob and I talked about it, and. We said, sure, let's let's do it. So we went around the province, Rollies Country Jamboree, yeah. for about, oh, I'd say a year maybe. Okay. Had some really good times. Mm -hmm. And uh, then uh, Jim Burns, who owned the Capital City Jamboree right. at the time. Which is uh, now the New Brunswick Country which Showcase. Which is now the New Brunswick Showcase. <clears throat> he asked us if we would take over his program. So we did that for a year. Right. And um, it was uh, it was a trial at times. That's a lot of work. It's a lot of work, and um, the admission back then was uh, six dollars to get in, <laughs> and the and the rent was four thousand dollars a night. So, uh, but anyway, uh, we did it for a year. So, how did you make any money? Well, we didn't no. at the end of. Well, but the 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 Playhouse will hold eight fifty, I believe, and we pretty much packed it every t every show that we had. Yeah. And um, so, but at the end of the year, we were, I think, $4,000 in the, in the hole. Right. So we just said, no, we're not going to bother with it. But uh, I have to tell you this little story, but uh, Ronnie Votor was our bass player yes. right from the get-go. <clears throat> and uh, Bob's mom always used to go to the, uh, to the programs, every one. So uh, she got to know them all, and they would joke with her. Uh, so Ronnie said, um, Betty, will you adopt me? And she said, oh, <laughs> yes. She said, I will. And then he turned around and he said, Mom, could I borrow $10? <laughs> <Ronnie> <laughs> it was a, hilarious. He's always a jokester. Yeah, he's yeah. always a jokester. So no, always so, always so much fun there. Yeah. Yeah, we had a good time. Uh, Tom Hoyt, of course, is the uh, Tom Hoyt is, yes. Is I don't know Tom. I don't, I've never you, met Tom. You've never met Tom? No. Tom never. Hoyt, he's, he's been uh, the director and the uh, the producer of the New Brunswick Country yes. Showcase now for uh, for a lot of years yeah. he's trying to get out of it and try to find uh, someone know. someone to take it I over know. which is a, yeah. is a feat in itself yeah but, uh, so after uh, the Jim Burns uh, show that you took over what happened then well nothing really in the music in in the music uh, end of it we just um, family just life in general mm -hmm. uh, I kept on writing I was always writing yeah. and um, back then I, I wrote songs that I thought were good but really they weren't yeah. they weren't good at all right. I didn't I, I didn't find a few of them um, I wrote a song for uh, Ernie Price who recorded yeah. uh, the first song that he did called I'll go on from here and shortly after that, Vince Gill came out with a song um, when I call your name right. and it was the same the same idea right and I thought oh, why didn't I think of that <laughs> yeah but anyway no I love to write yeah. and uh, so then um, I know I mentioned on the podcast about uh, Nicole Harrell and I uh, co-wrote a song called the line gets easy mm -hmm. and uh, that did very well it went um, it went to number one at what was then uh, what pure country was uh, KHJ then right yeah and uh, debuted at number 12 on the on the billboard charts what year was this that was in 1987 1987 87. so that was uh, six years before yeah I, before I showed you up. Yeah. yeah yeah and uh, then after that I um, 
uh, in 91, I wrote a song called Letter from a Soldier. Mm -hmm. And um, I was what it was the beginning of the Gulf War. Okay. And uh, as soon as, uh, and I saw some of the troops heading out, and this kid, just like 18 or 19 years old, and he just looked like he was terrified. Yeah. So anyway, I wrote that song, and um, we, I called two of my friends, Wendy Purcell and Dave Vigno, wrote the song on a Wednesday night. I said, uh, call them up. I said, you fellas come over here on Sunday because we've got to go to the studio to record this song. Yeah. So anyway, uh, Danny Crane, who yeah. owned uh, Sound Outreach. Outreach Productions. Yeah, Outreach Productions. Uh, well, it was up in Keswick at the time then. Right. Uh, Ernie Adset owned it, yeah. owned the studio. But anyway, I called him uh, the following Thursday. We went up to record the song. We had Dave uh, Palmer on steel guitar, mm -hmm. um, Olin Monteith on guitar, and D uh, Danny on piano. Right. So anyway, we, we recorded that and uh, took about three weeks to get it, uh, to get it finished up. And took it to the studio. Danny came with me when we came to, Tom Blizzard was the producer here right, then, yeah. the music director. Music director, yeah. And uh, so anyway, uh, gave it to him and um, then they're supposed to play a new song every nine hours in rotation. Right. Well, he called, Tom called me. I worked at the uh, Ormark to Post newspaper yeah. then. And uh, so he called me at the office and he said, Carol, we're going to play this song just in the next few minutes. Oh, really? So we put it on and the first day I heard it 19 times. That's was, how much. Was this the first song that you heard that you wrote that was on the air? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. No, no, sorry. Uh, the line gets easy. Right. Okay. Was the first one. Yeah. And then, uh, and then the uh, the letter from Soldier. Mm -hmm. And uh, no, it was uh, it was just a fantastic song and. So Very do, you, do you classify yourself more? Do you sing? I do sing, Brent, but it's not singing's not the thing that I love to do. I, I love to write. And that's why you have Joanne. And that's why I have Joanne. Yeah. She's got a beautiful voice. It's sort of like the, the, the Elton John, uh, Bernie Tappan <laughs> yes. uh, relationship because Elton does all the singing, Bernie yeah. does a lot of the songwriting. A lot of the songwriting, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And I mean, when you've got a friend, she's very talented in, um, she does a lot of the, we collaborate on the, on the melodies mm -hmm. for the songs. Um, just uh, met her six years ago, five or six years ago, and um, I just uh, at one of the jams. Okay. And I said, uh, Joanne, why don't you come up and sing harmony with me on my song? And she was like, Who is this woman <laughs> like? Anyway, so anyway, she did. Yeah. And uh, so after that, I was I was working on some songs, and I was thinking about doing a recording. So anyway, we got to talking and working together and the next thing we know we did three we recorded three cds in in three years wow so 30 songs 30 yeah. original songs you can imagine the work in, involved in that yeah. getting the and the expense a, and the expense yeah. but we did um but we paid the we sold enough cds to cover mm -hmm. to cover our costs yeah. and uh then the second cd uh was um a, um, a compilation and each of the individuals on it paid for their own okay but we supplied them with enough CDs to recoup their money okay to sell to recoup their money Wow so that that worked out very well yeah. too. yeah so no we were very happy and so Joanne but as I say we had to uh, work on the melodies get the demo done send that down to Chris Gay down at uh, in Lake Utopia mm -hmm. then he put it together on uh, the computer, right? A, a brilliant man. I, I just can't get over yeah. what he can do. Is he still producing? St uh, he's got starting to get out of it yeah. now, and his son Nick is taking okay. over. I think. How many songs you got in your back oh, pocket now? You know what? I, I, probably 150, 200. Um, I'd like to say more, but I, I had more, but I think I threw them all out because yeah. I just figured they weren't any good. Now, you. Do you pitch these songs? Like you, you, you've sent some songs to Nashville, right? I have. Last Christmas, um, Joanne and I, and I had just finished up a, an album, and there was uh, three Christmas songs on it. So um, this day on Facebook, this gentleman came up and he was asking for songwriters to send him uh, some original Christmas songs. Right. So I thought, well hey, what have I got to lose? Exactly. So I sent him two that afternoon, and uh, about 11 o'clock that night, I, just, I went to bed, and just got in bed, and the phone rang. And I said, oh, that's some scammer. I'm not going to get up and answer that phone. 
So the more I laid there, of course, I thought, oh, do you think that was him calling? They're two hours behind. <laughs> yeah, they're two <laughs> hours behind. Yeah. So anyway, sure enough, it had been him that uh -huh. phoned. I checked the number. And uh, so I phoned him back, and he said that um, he thought the songs were just amazing, yeah. and he was going to pitch them to a client of his. They didn't take the songs, or they didn't record the songs, mm -hmm. but um, they played well over in Europe, and uh, one of them was number four, and one of them was number seven. Wow. So, and the, so he said to me, Carol, if you, and it was Christian country okay. that he does. Yeah. So he said, any of the Christian country songs that you have, please send them to me. So what he does, um, Rick Swinebeck is his name, mm -hmm. and he owns a studio, or he rents a studio, I'm not clear sure. Right. And um, so anyway, he, he has clients that comes in, but uh, prior to that, he will pitch uh, some songs to them on Facebook Live, uh -huh, yeah. and then they have the opportunity to say, yeah, I'd like to have okay. that song. Now, I was gonna ask you, for the folks that are tuning in at home, um, maybe some tips of, of songwriting and how to get published and how to get copyrighted and all that sort of stuff. Maybe you could give them a tip or two, but you already have. Uh, but but what, about, what about how to write a song? Uh, how do you write a song for the folks that are ho at home right now thinking, you know, I, I can probably write a song. Well, and all they have to do is use their imagination they have the a song has to have the proper flow right um, the syllables like the syllables in a line the does everything first, have to rhyme uh yes okay to me it does mm -hmm. and and i know some of the newer songs don't rhyme yeah. all the time yeah. but i think it's better if you rhyme them. did you ever hear the song by george Strait, the chair Yes. And it's there's no chorus to the song. No chorus. It's just a, a continuation of a story. And, yes. and a lot of, like Tom T. Hall did a lot of songs like that that really don't have a chorus. It's just uh, like the, the ballad, ballad of $40. Yes. It's a story about a guy that t passed away and yeah. he was digging the grave and uh, wanted to go down and look at the Cadillac. And, and uh, it's, a, it's a shame because the guy owed him $40 <laughs> and he's never going to get the $40 back. No. But, uh, you know, it's a, st it's a story. It's and that's, a story. Yeah. And that, that's what I love to write, story songs. Yeah. And, or something with a message. Right. But as I say, like syllables, like... Um, Okay, let's take um, a song, for instance, um, I wrote um, All These Old Memories. Mm -hmm. um, I turned the page of an old book I found. Okay. Ten syllables. Right. So when you get to the first line of the second verse, ten syllables. Ten syllables. Ooh. And yes, and then there's, uh, and Joanne will tell you, there's places in there to take, you pause to take a breath. Mm -hmm. So we we slap we put the slash marks in right. so we know where that takes so it's like place. A, it's like a formula. It's like a formula. It is. I had Amelia Underhill uh, in the last episode of There's Always a Song, and she says that some days she can write a song in 30 minutes, and some days it takes 30 to 40 or 60 days to write a song. That's exactly right. She's right. Yeah. Um, I've written a song um, while I'm working in the kitchen, mm -hmm. like I'm baking, I'm, I'm cooking. Yeah. Uh, I'll go back to the to the my little desk and I write a line. I'll go back to the kitchen, another line will come. I wrote a whole song that not too long ago that way. <laughs> and you put sugar in your recipe exactly. instead of flour, Stas didn't you? <laughs> yes, <laughs> but uh, it just depends. And then then you'll hear uh, or see something written. I had a friend that um, she lost someone that she loved. Right. And uh, she had said something about, uh, I'll see you in my dreams. Mm -hmm. Well, I thought, I'll see you when I fall asleep. Uh -huh. So it's a beautiful song, and Joanne sang it beautifully. Yeah. And, uh, and then Bob says to me, Carol, write a song about the, the, ch the little churches closing. And uh, so I wrote Little Country Church, mm -hmm. putting the locks on the doors. Nice. And uh, so it's just, it's just little things that, that come to you. But I like to write something. You have to, the best songs I find are written from the heart mm -hmm. and they're sung from the heart. Yeah. You have to have that feeling in them or they are no good. I, I, I asked Amelia this last last episode, do you have a favorite song? From all the songs that you've written over the years, do you have a favorite one that, that that's your baby? I would have to say 
that Emily's Fiddle is okay. probably it. And that's the song. That's the song we're, that we're going to hear. Yeah, uh, Joanne's going to sing. Uh, that's coming up in just a bit. We're going to we're going to talk about that song yeah. in just a, a, a few minutes time. Yeah. Um, now you mentioned before we went on the air about AI, artificial intelligence songwriting. Yes. Now, do you think that's cheating? Um, I did think that yeah. when I first heard it. And what what's and you and you've tried it out just for and just I've for tried fun. it out and. Um, it will never, let me say, it will never replace live musicians. Right. Because you, you just don't want to do that. Right. I don't want to do that. But in, uh, in my position as a writer, yeah. and uh, in order to be able to present these songs for pitching to artists, they have to be professionally done. Yeah. Um, before we were having to take do all the work that I just mentioned, yeah. then take them to the studio, record them at five hundred dollars a, a shot. Yeah. And this, it cost me. Um, I, I just tried it. My my son's a writer too. Yeah. He just wrote the two of the most beautiful country songs you ever could hear. Really. And uh, so anyway, he introduced me to AI. It's yeah. called AI Song Generator. Right. And I thought, oh, I don't know. But anyway, I tried it. Well, Brent, I was so overwhelmed with the results. And they come back to you in 15 or 20 seconds. Really? Done. Done. Wow. Voice, beautiful voices, beautiful arrangements, melodies. Yeah. Unbelievable. Wow. And do you have to plug in what you want the song to be yeah, about? I type, in, I type in my lyrics. Um, oh, you do all the lyrics yourself. Oh, yes, my my own lyrics. And then they generate the the the, the, right. the, the melody yeah. and the and the, and the yeah. instrument instrumentation. Yeah, and stuff that's like that. right. Yeah. So okay. that is what I sent. I sent four of them uh, down to Nashville, yeah. and all four of them got accepted for for pitching. Really? So yes. So who do you hope? Picks one of these songs. Well, you from. know, it's going to be nobody, no nobody famous. It's going to be. Well, you never who, know. Well, once they're heard. Yeah. Once they're heard, then uh, then perhaps. Yeah. But um, the song I was telling you about just a little while ago, it's called um, "That's a That's a Hold Your Breath Moment." Uh, my daughter Kim, she said, "Mom, Luke." Is it Coombs? Luke, Luke Combs. Could sing that song in a heartbeat. Yeah. And see, I don't know him. Yeah. I don't know. He's one I of the new ones. Yeah, yeah. he's yeah. one of the new ones. Yeah. And uh, I didn't know his style, or but yeah. she loves him. And she said, Mom, he would sing that in a really? heartbeat. So Now, we all know that Randy Travis had a stroke. Yes, yes. And uh, it, he has a hard time walking, can't, yeah, can't, speak, can't speak or sing. No. But AI, did you yeah. hear the song? Yes, I did. AI generated Amazing. his voice. Yeah and a song, and it's the newest Randy yeah. Travis song, yeah. which has just been released last month. Exactly. And it's unbelievable. Unbelievable. I saw it, and there were so many people online complaining about it, and I thought, you know what? This man is back in the studio where he loved to be. Yeah, he, he was in the studio while this whole, exactly. thing, whole thing was happening. He's 100% 100, 100 behind it. Yeah. And he's back. And let the man do it. Exactly. Like, my Lord, it's totally. just crazy. Yeah. But uh, I checked. Like I was, I was a little bit afraid of the AI. You know what were the le the uh, legalities mm -hmm. with it? But I checked with them yesterday, and they said absolutely. You go right ahead and yeah. use it. Wow. Um, and um, well, commercially, as long as, you're, as long as you're using your own lyrics. And, oh yeah, and, my yeah, own. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Uh, we're slowly running out of time. I do want to mention a couple of shows coming up. There's one show in September, and what is it called? It's called The Women of Country. Women of Country. Who's uh, emceeing that show? Uh, that would be you, Brent. Oh, that's right. Yes. <laughs> And there's one coming up in November. It's called the Country Gentleman. The Country Gentleman. So there's going to be all gentlemen in that concert. Mm -hmm. Well, one woman, uh, Joanne, we're putting her in the rhythm okay. guitar uh, section. Yeah. And uh, so all the other, uh, the are going to be women. Um, Joanne, myself, um, Nellie Spinney, Lana Munn, and Joyce Boone, okay. and Marlene Wallace. Nice. So it's going to be a beautiful concert. It's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, a lot of fun. So we're going to jump into uh, the song in just a couple yeah. minutes' time. The song that you're going to feature, Joanne, of course, is going to be singing the yeah. song and playing the guitar. Uh, the song is called Emily's Fiddle. And mm -hmm. tell us really quickly what, what the song's all about. Uh, Emily's Fiddle is about um, the tragedy that happened in uh, Port Effect, Nova Scotia in April of uh, 2020. Mm -hmm. uh, the youngest victim was uh, Emily Tuck, and she was 17, learning how to play the fiddle. So on the um, Nova Scotia Kitchen Party Group, she 
before this tragedy happened, right. of course, played a tune called um, In Memory of Herbie McLeod. And that was written by Jerry Taylor, mm -hmm. uh, Jerry uh, Holland right. Sr. He has passed. But um, Joanne and I knew we had to have that tune on the recording. Right. So I got in touch with his son, and he gave me permission to put it on the on the recording. Nice. So that's where the song came. And uh, Joanne, she was trying to get the perfect melody for it. And she cried and she <laughs> for two or three weeks and just couldn't come up with the tune. Right. Then one morning she was vacuuming an old Kenmore vacuum cleaner and uh, the hum of it, mm -hmm. it just she she just wove the, the melody around the Herbie McLeod tune. Wow. And it just came out absolutely beautiful. And um, Jacqueline Rowan Howe played the fiddle okay. on the... She's amazing, too. Oh, she's just amazing. All right, so folks at home, uh, grab your Kleenex boxes, and we're going to come right back. Uh, we have Joanne Swan and a song called Emily's Fiddle. It's coming up next on There's Always a Song. All right, welcome back to There's Always a Song. My name is Brent Buchanan from Pure Country. Now, my guest on the show was Carol Hill, and she's mainly the songwriter, and we're going to ask Joanne Swan to perform the song for us right now. The song is called Emily's Fiddle. So many empty chairs around the table
All right, Joanne Swan, thank you very much for performing that beautiful song written by Carol Hill. Uh, thank you, Carol, and thank you, Joanne, for being here with us on There's Always a Song. My name is Brent Buchanan from Pure Country, and if you do write your own material, we would love to have you on the show. Just reach out to me on Facebook and tune in next week for another episode of There's Always a Song.